Hello, and welcome to episode 68 of Anime Territory. Almost forgot her name there for a second. I'm your host this week, uh, Johnny Ruhal. With me, as always, is my co-host, Benjamin Dirty Red Shabbing. Okay. So, I was debating this, because we may or may not be watching this using some uh, Blu-ray rips that I have from years and years and years ago. Um, but I have access to Crunchyroll, so... I don't know what the legality there is. Anyway, uh, they translated it as Dirty Red. On the wiki, it was Scarred Red. But mm. either way, it's an uh, insult to to our lovely our lovely Magus. I was always Team Blue. Toko. You mean you were always Team Blue? Red versus Blue. Okay. I guess I get that. But... I don't know. It kind of didn't matter. It was no, like... it didn't. <laughs> it really... Blue's my favorite color, so it's like, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's <laughs> it's every boy's favorite color at one point in their life. It's true. Unless they've got anger issues. Then it's green. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, or, like, issues with authority, then it's black. Okay. Or issues with authority, but it's 2006, then it's pink and black. Pink and black. Mm -hmm. Pink is the new black. That was a thing, right? I thought orange was the new black. That was a TV show. Oh. Anyway, we're talking about uh, movie Epi Movies. Epi Movies. I forgot about Epi Movies. God, now I'm angry. (laughs) Five and six. Now you're. To be fair, number five is definitely a movie. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Six is what, like 50 minutes? <laughs> yeah, I think it was 50 minutes. So not like a... Not a, not a theatrical run time. Down down it did. It was in theaters. Okay. Um, spe- specifically, movie five is called Paradox Spiral, and movie six is called Oblivion Recording. Okay. So um, I want to just start. What are your impressions of movie five? Movie five. Um... It was kind of great. I don't know if I understand it all. Okay. But again, it's just that thing where I was just vibing with it. I'm just like, yeah, this is cool. <laughs> all right. I like this. All right. Good, good, good. Don't That's... know if I know what's going on, but... I think this again. is the second, possibly the third time I've seen movie five. Okay. And it, I think it makes sense. <laughs> You think it there, are, there are some things where I'm just like, all right, whatever. <laughs> like, I'm just going to kind of, like, I don't understand that part, but I understand its function in the story so I can move forward. Can, I'm, I just, I know about the Nazi universe. Nazi the Nazi universe. So it's just like, I know there's going to be things where it just this doesn't make sense. So it's just, don't worry yeah, about it. Yeah, just don't worry about it. You know what function it serves <laughs> in the story. Moving on. Yes. Okay. Don't overthink it. Just don't worry about it. Shiki's back. Shiki's back. Doesn't matter how she got back. She's she's back. Doesn't matter that the timing is almost perfect. perfect. <laughs> and that they then said it didn't matter what you did. She would have come back at that time no matter what. Whatever. Doesn't matter. She's back. She's here. It's she's like the sword. points. Doesn't matter. It's like what? It's like the points. From oh, his line. Okay. I'm like... Wait, what? <laughs> the points? Yeah. Uh, is that a thing in the Nazi verse that I'm not familiar with? No. So, like, waypoints on the search for the root? Search for the root. Yeah. The origin. Is that what the... Okay. So, is the root and the origin the same thing? Yes. Okay. I had to look that up. Yes. Okay. But it's also called the Akashic Record. Yeah, they mentioned that at one point. Um, all the same thing. Okay. But, again, I think it was, like, a weird translation thing where they're... We're not thinking of it as the same thing because we've watched so many different Mm -hmm. ways that they've translated it. And they might have translated in the official one in Garden of Sinners differently than they did in, like, you know, Fate Stay Night Mm -hmm. Unlimited Mm Blade Works or something. So Different people might use different words. Yeah. Different terms. See, I like this movie. There are parts that I felt like it was showing its age. Like, the whole, like... Not the whole thing. But a big thing about these movies is that they're really beautiful movies. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying this one isn't beautiful. But I'm just saying on the action scenes, it felt like they were using, like, more cuts 
than like showing okay like actual like fluid choreography as much as in some of the other movies Mm -hmm. um and maybe that's because they had the same amount of budget for a double runtime i noticed sorry to cut you off is that in the like hallway scene Mm -hmm. like that first big fight we get the color seemed a little muted Hmm. usually their colors are really popping popping it just felt a little muted i don't know if that was like on purpose or not though yeah i don't know i just felt like watching it this time and i'm glad you didn't necessarily catch up on this but you know i don't know just the second time or the once you kind of know what's happening and you're like anticipating Mm -hmm. okay now it's this scene now it's this scene you kind of just pay attention to those details more because you're not so much wondering wait what's going on um it wasn't much action focused either though true there was just that kind of one major fight i would say there's a couple there's a couple but none of them are like but it's like big action pieces i guess which we'll we'll put a pin in this we'll come back to this in a moment but yeah i liked episode five what were your impressions of episode six? Epi movie six. Epi movie six. Epi movie six is kind of lower on the tier for me. I yeah. wasn't quite into it. Uh, there are things I like about it. I like that it's it's not as high stakes as episode five. Epi movie five. Mm-hmm. Um, it is, you know, just more like okay, we haven't really gotten to know. Nikia's sister very much. This I think that might be my her. kind of issue with it. It's just it's focused on Azuka. I'm just like I don't care. <laughs> oh, I like Azuka. I don't care. Azaka, however you want to pronounce it. Azuka, Az- yeah, whatever. Um, I just I like I like her relationship with Shiki. <laughs> I love how antagonistic That's it is. True, I guess. I just don't feel like we had enough of it. Yeah. Um, just a lot of Azuka. I'm just like okay, and we don't really know. Like, at this point, we know what Shiki's, like, power set is, what she's working with, just or what her abilities. Like... Where it's just like, Asuka is a mage, and she can't see fairies, except for when she, she can. can. <laughs> and she, like, kicked that thing, and she's got a glove, which I read in a wiki is something that Toko gave her to enhance her abilities, but I don't know what her abilities are. Um, In the wiki I read, she has... It's like ignition mage or something. Is she like a fire mage? I'm guessing. Yeah. So I'm yeah. guessing it's kind of like a fire mage. Yeah, because the glove was called like the scarlet glove or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I, it was definitely lighter, but um, lighter. Uh, <laughs> you saw the. Pre- it's still about like it? attempted suicide and drug addiction and Revenge. rumored rape or rumored. Uh, yeah, I would say rape. Okay. Rumored forced relationship, which is a mm-hmm. form of yeah. rape there. Um, it's just episode five teased like uh, Shiki's in high school now. Or like undercover at high school. It yeah. wasn't really that. Yeah, it was. It was she like, just wore okay. the school uniform and she was there during winter break. Yeah. It's not like she was in classes or anything or like had to like be like, no, I go here. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of what I was kind of hoping for, which I probably should have known that was what we were going to get, but man can dream. Yeah. I mean, we got Shiki in high school. It's Epa Movie 2. That's true. But even then. (laughs) Even then. (laughs) Not really. It's like, we've got Mikia camping outside her house. That's what we have in Movie 2. Yeah, that was more of a Mikia thing, though. Yeah. We got Mikia in high school. Mm -hmm. That's the, the deal there. Um... But it gave us our one of the best new characters, our good boy Akira. Okay, this dog. It's a good boy. New segment, not new segment, but uh, best boy. <laughs> best boy is Akira in this yes. one. Yes. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so I'd like to take a moment uh, to just sort of straighten out where we're at chronologically right now. Okay, go for it. Um, so. Do you want me to include the um, future gospel, which is sort of no, mixed in? Because it's sort of a side story. Talk anyway. about where we are at. Okay. So, of the movies we have seen, 
there is the the first one chronologically is Epa Movie Two: A Study in Murder Part One. Okay, which makes sense. That's when yes. they're in high school. The next one chronologically is Epa Movie Four: The Hollow Shrine. That's when okay. um, Shiki wakes up in the hospital, and there's the mm-hmm. evil spirits and um, all that. Yes. Next one in chronological order is, and this is third in chronological order, third in release order. Mm-hmm. Epa movie three, remaining sense of pain. Okay. Um, that is the one where the um, the girl has a um, pain intolerance. Yeah, she has a pain intolerance that she is losing every once in a while, mm-hmm. and uh, she's going around killing people, and she keeps hunting her down. Um, the next one in chronological order is part of Future Gospel, which we haven't gotten to. Okay. Side story, don't worry about it. Then we have Epa Movie 1, Overlooking View. Okay. So the first movie is, if we count Future Gospel, fifth in chronological order. Okay. Um, <clears throat> then, and the, and the reason why I wanted to bring this up now is moving forward with movie five, six, seven, epilogue, and then the last half of Future Gospel. We're just going in order now. We're not playing catch up anymore. We're not going to be flashing back. I mean, there might be like some flashbacks, yeah. you know, some context given to to scenes, but the movies themselves are going to be in chronological order moving on. So okay. Paradox Spiral is six in chronological order. Oblivion Recording, 7 Chronological Order. Study Murder Part 2 is 8 in Chronological Order. Epilogue is 9. There is a book called Final Record, which is 10. Don't worry about that. There's no adaptation. And you don't read. Nope. Uh, And then the latter half of Future Gospel takes place like 10 years later. So it's technically 11. Yeah. So like you really don't have to worry about what we're missing in book 10. And we really don't have to worry too much about the fact that we missed something in Future Gospel first half because it's really just a, it's another like, they got a mission sort Mm -hmm. of thing. Which we kind of split this up. We we split up Garden of Sinners into two types of movies, which I think we can still kind of do. But um, movie five sort of bridges the two types. So if you remember... We mentioned um, half of the movies are like, here's the story of um, Shiki and Mikia. The other half of the movies are, here they are solving some sort of case. Okay. So, like, Overlooking View, that's then, like, solving a case. Study Murder Part 1, that's a Mikia, Shiki-centered story. Mm -hmm. Uh, Remaining Sense of Pain, that's them solving a case. Hollow Shrine, that's a Mikia, Shiki-centered story. Paradox Spiral, we learn at the end of The Hollow Shrine, Araya Soryu, a magus, was going around, or went around to three people and did something for them, gave them some sort of power or helped them unlock some sort of power. Two of them we had seen so far, the the ghost girl in the hospital in Overlooking View the pain intolerance girl in Remaining Sense of Pain, and another character that I made sure that you would note down because we'd see them again. And technically we'd seen them before, okay. but very briefly, um, deliberately briefly, I believe. Okay. Um, so we're like, oh, okay. Well, those those two movies, you know, those two antagonists in movie one and movie three, we kind of dismiss them as case of the week movies, mm-hmm. but they're tied to this um, Araya Soryu guy. And Paradox Spiral is very much like, okay, hey, wait a minute. This guy brings up those two people and how they, you know, he was trying to do something to Shiki with them. And this is very much sort of a case of the week story, but also sort of tying into. It starts as a case of the week in the trance, what is it? Yeah, it, it transitions it transitions into being a more Mikia, um, Shiki-based story. In fact, mm-hmm. we get, I don't know if you caught this, 
we got a brief we're like in the spoilers now <laughs> okay we got a brief flashback at one point to a younger Shiki fighting Arya Soryu in the bamboo field. Which okay. we had not yeah. seen before. Mm-hmm. Which I think may happen shortly before she gets hospitalized. Because we don't really see exactly what happens at the end of movie two. Okay. There's there's like there's a little bit of time that we've lost there. And we've now got a brief glimpse that wait a minute, Arya Soryu was there? Interesting. Uh, so we'll get more of that in the A Study in Murder Part 2, which is very much a Mikia shiki centered story and very much tied to that character we see more of at the end of um, Paradox Spiral, the guy that's eating the, the corpse there. Okay, the hungry guy. Yeah, the hungry guy. So we will see him in A Study in Murder Part 2 which ties him to Araya Soryu, but also ties into the Shiki story. So really, it's all kind of tying together. And maybe even a little bit of Oblivion recording. That one's even less so <laughs> tied off than the other two. Well, you learned that that one guy was, like, sent by yes. Arya. Or, or, the, basically... Araya. Or... Araya. Arya. Whatever. Arya. Arya. I, I don't know. Um, yeah, whatever. The, but that one is more just like, yeah, I was sent to help you remember something that you forgot. Mm-hmm. But also this case you're dealing with, that has nothing to do with it. That was just me fucking around because I was bored. <laughs> um, that was me trying to grant somebody's wish because I was bored. Mm-hmm. And also, what is it? It's, uh, it's not work. It's not life if you're not like having a hobby or something. Yeah, if if you're just if you're just surviving, that's not life. You have to have your, your distractions, your entertainments, or something. Mm-hmm. Um, that guy's power was just the power of suggestion, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is he put to good use. It's like you're gonna lose sight of me. Fuck, <laughs> damn. Where did he go? My eyes. My murder eyes. Where I can't see who I want to murder. <laughs> I feel like she'd be able to do it without sight, though. I guess it... It comes it? from her eyes. Well, I, I feel like... I don't know. Her power is like she can see death, but I guess it's still technically her eyes. I thought maybe yeah, maybe like, she doesn't see with her eyes. It's just her interpreting. It took away her sight, but not her, like... I always forget the name. Death Perception Sight or whatever. Yeah. Something um, totally different. Just like, I can't see you, but I can see, like, your death. See, I don't think that's how it works. Okay, I'm just saying it could have been like that. Yeah. Um, maybe. I mean, that's like a thing, though. It's like, well, it's like I interpreted it as sight, but really it's just like it's its own, like, feeling sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But... Um, I think it is directly tied to her eyes because there are, um, because I was just reading Toko's wiki page today, just kind of familiarize myself with how powerful of a mage she is, um, which is powerful. Uh, (laughs) The, she has, she also has mystic eyes. She's got mystic eyes of enchantment, which does not get brought up in this Mm -hmm. whatsoever, but like the glasses that she wears those are what's called mystic eye killers, meaning they just you wear these glasses and they negate the effects of your mystic eyes. Okay. Um, which like she in Tsukihime she gave to the other Shiki. She gave him glasses because like the mystic eyes of death perception for that character and I guess for other people like causes physical pain. Oh really? <laughs> but Shiki is just like, nope, <laughs> I don't have that problem. Uh, but it might be more, maybe not like physical pain. It might be like mental stress about seeing the death of things. And I guess Shiki just doesn't give a shit about that. Or I don't know. But she never mentions it causing any issues. But it's like a plot point that it's, you know, it's painful for him to have his mystic eyes mm-hmm. in Tsukihime. Um, and also, uh, well, no, I'll, I'll leave that. Because we need to watch... Um, we need to watch the third um, Heaven's Feel movie. Mm-hmm. 
but uh, yeah, Mystic Eye Killers. So anyway, got off on a on a tangent there. Um, so let's move into a segment which we have every week, but this week I've decided to call it "What the Hell Happened." <laughs> So I want you to try to describe what happened in these movies, and feel free to ask me any questions that you have. Okay. Starting with Paradox Spiral. So we start with this guy named Tomo Enjo. Yep. Uh, he stabs his parents to death. Yep. He goes on the run. He gets into a fight with some dudes. Shiki saves him, and then he lives with Shiki for a month. Yep. Um... <laughs> That's it. <laughs> that's all that happens in this book. Yep, that's all that happens. <laughs> no. Okay, so that happens. Um, he has this like routine where he basically like sits on this bench and watches the news to wait for his like announcement of his parents to be dead, but it mm-hmm. never happens. Yep. And it's after about a month, Shiki's just like, "Why don't we just go like go to your house, see what happened?" Well, so actually, after about a month. He stops showing up for like a week at her place. And oh, then okay. when he's listening to the news, he sees his mom out Forgot walking. That. He sees his mom. And he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Did I see some sort of doppelganger? Is my mom really dead? So, and Shiki's like, hmm, what a coincidence. Hmm. Uh, I guess he also sees that one weird dude. Says he's fo- who's following Shiki. Oh, he's yeah. the other mage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cornelius Alba. Yes. That guy's um, weird. Yeah, he's a little obsessed. Yeah. Why would you just? Why would you dress like that? You're just like he's asking British. for it. It's from the clock tower. That's true. That's how British people dress, Ben. It's a British <laughs> magistrate's dress. They they bring up the like school in London. I'm like, oh, I know what school they're talking about. <laughs> the clock tower. Yeah. The clock tower. <laughs> I know what that is. Sort of. <laughs> sort of. Anyways, so that all happens there. Um, then they investigate, they go to the, his apartment building, which is, we basically learn is like some magic boundary yes. contraption so, type of thing. So Toko helped build this. Build it uh-huh. as like an experiment ground, but she hasn't really been involved since then. And it's been changed. Mm-hmm. Um, Shiki notices that as the elevator goes up, it slowly moves in a spiral. Yes. Which you know, throws off your sense of direction here. And they also... There's there's also, like, noises and stuff that, like... That kind of hide the fact that... Mm -hmm. That you're you're distracted by the noise, so you don't necessarily feel the the rotation. Yes. They also fucked with the stairs Mm -hmm. somehow. Um, They, like, shifted them up and down or something. They're able to, like, move them. Yeah. The... Anyway. She's like, okay... We go to the go to this building. And he's like, "Well, just ring the doorbell. If nobody shows up, then I'll know that the fake I saw was a fake." And she's like, "Nope, we're not going to ring the doorbell. We're just, just going to go in." Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason that they went in is there's some sort of spell on this place where um, living puppets reenact the last day of their life on every day. Every day, um, and they only. If you ring the doorbell, then they'll act as if there's a visitor. Mm-hmm. Um, but since they didn't ring the doorbell and just entered, they can't see them. They don't mm-hmm. realize that they're there. Um, and then we just watch um, Tomo's mom kill her dad, uh, kill his dad. Well, we get we get the bit first. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes, an old bit from a demo video. <laughs> Where the dad beats the wife, sits down at the table and says, when's dinner going to be ready? <laughs> and then uh, and she takes was... a frying pan. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that bill was from this movie. I was like, what? <laughs> um, Dude, that was like maybe the best part of the movie when she hits him with the frying pan. I don't know why it was so funny. It was very satisfying. Yeah. Because you're just like, man, fuck this guy. And then, oh. Comes up with a frying pan and whack him on the head. He's dead. <laughs> Which might also stab this role too because he's like starts like spasming. Mm-hmm. It's really fun. <clears throat> All right then. Uh, note to self. 
get smaller frying pans. Get softer frying pans. That's fine. We don't have any like cast iron. We're good. <laughs> okay. Uh, then we see. We we also we saw another Injo Tomo like come yes. home and go directly to his room. Mm-hmm. And then like we see the mom go in and stab the. Um, we should also bring up like the Injo that we know has had dreams about this. Yes. Of his mom. And that's what caused him to, to snap and yeah. and kill his parents the first time. It's because he kept having this recurring dream. Or did he? Uh, um, um. The So then they leave and they're like, okay, yep, that was fucked up. Why don't we go to the other side? Yeah. It's like... Uh, <laughs> and she like mentions something and it's like, yeah, it, Mikio wouldn't get things wrong and doesn't explain like what she means by that it's like you actually lived in 410 he would not have gotten that detail wrong Mm -hmm. so you're just used to going out and going to yeah there's a whole spiel where it's like yeah people are like you wouldn't know what apartment you're in just by the what is the hell is it if somebody changed like the letters on your apartment you wouldn't know the difference or something like that yeah first of all they changed the letters on your apartment and then they changed how you, like, okay, I'm used to the elevator door. Okay. I just go straight out or I go Into behind it, it after yeah. I out and then I go. So if the elevator door rotates 180 degrees on its way up and you don't realize that, wait a minute, I'm not facing the same way. Mm-hmm. And the skyline and the position is very similar. You're not going to notice a difference between the two. You would just you know, unconsciously go towards this other thing, yeah. even though it's not your actual apartment. So they go, they were in 405. You they get, go to 410. Sorry, do you get that feeling sometimes, like, when you're walking to your car? I feel like I do that sometimes. Or, like, I'm not, like, really paying attention. I'll just, like, walk to a random car. I'm like, this isn't my car. Maybe. <laughs> okay. I, one time, uh, after church with my parents, um, I went to a car that looked very similar to my mom's, and open up the back door, and it was not my mom's, and there were people in there, and I'm like, oops, this is not my car. <laughs> Closed the door and went to, like, a car or two down the line from gotcha. it. So that's happened to me before. Um, so maybe like that. Uh, anyway, as they they go to 410, and they see um, corpses of the mom and dad there. Mm-hmm. And then they leave 410, and Araya Soryu shows up. Well, they also see the dead body of Toma, too. Oh, I don't, I don't think they do at this oh, point. Oh, yeah, you're right. Sorry, spoilers. Yeah. Because at this point, we don't know if we're with the original Tomo or with one iteration that yeah. broke the cycle. Spoilers, we're with one that broke the cycle. Yes. He's, um, he's a puppet. Yep. The... Um, yeah, they leave. They see Araya Soryu out mm-hmm. there in the hallway. Shiki's like, fuck. I don't see any lines of death on him. Well, they they fight the zombies first. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, there's a whole bunch of them. But yeah. then she makes short work of them. Yes. <laughs> right? So he shows up. He's like, nope, you're not going to see lines of death on me because I've like hidden them inside of my body or something. You won't be Whatever. able to see them. Some magic. It's, it's also <laughs> it's because that's not really his real body there. Yeah. He's like sort of molded into the building itself. So that's just like... That's like he's basically a jar, a brain in a jar, kind of. Well, it's maybe no. Nah, it's mind. it's more like if I had lines of death in my body, but not on my hand, and all you saw was my hand, you wouldn't see the lines of death there. Does that make sense? So we were just seeing like a part of his body. Okay. Um, it's very much why I actually I can draw a, a parallel to the Eldrazi in Magic: The Gathering. Okay. Because um, they are described as beings that live between the planes, and what we see in the planes is just a small part of them. It's not the whole of them. Okay. And they're like they akin it to if you were if your whole world was a pond, and something stuck its hand into the pond. You would think it's some sort of weird monster, but it wouldn't be the whole being, you know, so there would be no point in, you know, like attacking just that part of it because okay. it's not the whole thing. 
your view is under the pond. Yeah, so okay. you just see what's in the pond. You mm-hmm. see you see the hand, but you don't see the person. Gotcha. Um, it's like fish. Yeah, yeah. Shiki's a fish. That's what Shiki's I'm getting a at. Fish. Um, well, a shark. Okay. Which is a fish. Yeah. Or something. Barracuda. <laughs> anyway, they uh, does Shiki. Do they get out at this point, or is she captured at this point? She's captured. Okay. She, like, gets eaten by the wall. Yeah. Araya Sori was just like, you're going to become part of the building now. This this was all sort of a trap to bring you here. It's a trap. Because um, he wants to use Shiki, who represents the Taiji, to reach the Taiji, which is also the root. Mm-hmm. Another name for the root. He wants to use... She represents... Her the duality of herself, the male inside the female, and then the the contradiction inside of that the, the present there is like a representation of of the root. Um, the mystic eyes of death perception also, you know, is caused by reaching the root or something like that. Is is what's going on? That's the point where you're just sort of like, okay, he needs. So she, she got the eyes by reaching the root. Yeah, by like glimpsing it somehow. Okay. With the nature of who she is. And then I think because of the death of the other half. Um, there's a whole thing where, well, that sort of gets. So they talk about it a little bit more in epilogue. Okay. About, don't worry about, about it. Shiki's personalities okay. and things like that. Um, but suffice it to say, this is the type moon Nasu verse thing. You don't have to know exactly what's going on. Just know that bad guy using Shiki to access the root. Yes. Why does he want to access the root? Well, he wants to kill everybody so he can record all of their lives so that he can find meaning in the meaninglessness of life. Yes. Um, Because he can't save everyone. You know, they died meaninglessly. But if he records everyone's death and everyone dies meaninglessly, then there's some meaning to it or something. Ah, Again, know. it's a contradiction. These it's a this, paradox. Yes. The, the everything is rife with paradox in this movie intentionally. Yes. Um because that's what he's using to reach the root. He's using paradox to mm-hmm. reach that. Um Yeah, wasn't that the thing you this experiment was like trying to he using death as a way to like countermeasure something else or something. Well, he was also trying when you try to reach the root, mm-hmm. you will get blocked by the counterforce. Yes. Um and he was doing something sneaky to try to like if he uses the taiji inside the taiji, then the counterforce won't see it. See something. it mm-hmm. sort of thing. Gotcha. Um so like the building it was sort of built to contain the fact that he's using Shiki to reach the root. Because otherwise, uh, heroic spirits are going to show up yeah. as, as agents of the counterforce. Um, but really, counterforce is more vague than that. Because Toko is like, no, everything that that we're doing here is because of Sorry. the counterforce compelling us to to it's do this. Probably spoilers for from Fate stuff. I'm pretty sure, isn't Shiro a counterforce yes. agent? Yes. One of the roots or one of the routes... Yes. He becomes well, like the counter agent, counter yes. force agent for the yes. Grail. Or the, the the hero Emia yeah. um, becomes it is a heroic spirit that can be summoned because he becomes part of the counter force. That's like that's one of the bad paths that Shiro's life could go down is mm-hmm. that he becomes he lives to his ideal, which is you know causes him to be tied to the counter force there, yeah. um, but. Those heroic spirits can't show up and fuck things up because of this clever trap. So really, the counterforce is acting through our main characters is sort of what okay. Toko is implying. It's like all these you have to take all these actions from here forward as actions of the counterforce going against you. So them like storming the apartment was a counterforce. Yeah, okay. the 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 love that both. Injo and Mikia have for Shiki that causes them to infiltrate it and like the okay 
it's, it's just like it's 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 this binding force. I don't know what to tell you. It's it's hippy dippy shit. <laughs> yeah, it's um, yin and yang. Yes. For every action, there's whatever. This is, anyway. <clears throat> I'm kind of blowing it over, but yeah, cool. That, that's cool. That's, I like it. That's like the first third of the movie. The wiki kind of Wikipedia splits this into yeah, three separate arcs mm-hmm. here, so we kind of get what happens to Shiki, and therefore what happens. Second to... arc is Miki is the world's greatest detective, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we follow Miki. Why he was like at one point, Shiki says like, "Oh, he's." gone away for a long time my my friend um it turns out he was at a driving school in the suburbs for a month to get a license Mm -hmm. and toko was just like yeah i don't see the need of licenses if you can do it that's great if not why do i need a piece of paper that tells me if i can do it or not you live in a city (laughs) live in a walkable city okay but she's the one that supposed i learned recently in her in her building she has several cars, a couple of motorcycles, that is true. and a plane. <laughs> a plane? Yeah, she's got like a single engine plane. Okay. I'm like, how big is the plane? <laughs> but apparently, because of her like disdain for her sister, she uses her sister's name to like buy a bunch of crap. <laughs> <laughs> to the point where it's like, yeah, this might bring attention to me, but it's worth it to piss off my sister. <laughs> Interesting. Um the also why she's like broke a lot of times she's just like, yeah i'm just wasting money mm-hmm. <laughs> in my sister's name um yeah but at this point we see some of what mikia it, it blends a little bit with like oh okay when shiki came home with that sword it was mikia gave it to her when he ran into um this like servant of hers that works for her family mm-hmm. um when she was gone and the door was locked oh yeah because again that first part we get some like cuts and stuff where things happen now we're kind of filling in the pieces yeah this has got a lot of like jumps and time skips as people are explaining things which doesn't make it easier to understand no and they keep jumping back this it's like oh wait are they jumping back to the same moment as before or is this a different moment you know is this the same like how often has Miki come to this door and found it locked? Um, That's true. Doesn't yeah. it help hurt help that like all the dialogues in the same building and like the same places? So it's just like, yeah. It's like wait, how many what? times have they talked here? <laughs> is this the same instance of them talking here, or is this a separate instance of them coming here? Um, the You know, Toko and Miki go to the building, and Toko's like, "Here's all these tricks." And Miki is like, "What the fuck? I went up two f- flights of steps. When did that happen? How did I get to the sixth floor when I only went up one flight of steps from the fourth floor?" Pistons, baby. Uh, <laughs> you know, why are we? Why is this different than the blueprints that I read? The elevator shouldn't open up to four oh five to four or four hundred to four oh five. It should open yeah. up to four oh six to four ten. Mm-hmm. Um, they no, I like that. Uh, Toko or Toka, Toko, Toko gives Mikia the assignment of like figuring out all the tenants of this apartment. It's like, take your time with it. The next day, I got 30 of the 60, 30 of the 50, 30 of the 50. And she's like, don't worry about the other 20, they're all fake. (laughs) Like, he did this all in a day. Um, meanwhile, he goes, he goes to Shiki's apartment again, mm-hmm. uh, but Shiki's not there, but Tomo is, and Joe Tomo is okay. there. Um, and he's like, who the fuck are you? And he's like, I'm Shiki's friend. He's like, all right. <laughs> Everything I we guess. described took about 20 minutes to happen. <laughs> 20 to 30 minutes. Um, which might like, sound like it. She's <laughs> trapped there. We got to go rescue her. And. Tomo was like, or not Tomo, uh, Miki is like, all right, but we got to make a stop first. Uh, when I read up on your family, this was your childhood home until you're eight and some terrible shit happened. And then we get some Tomo uh, backstory of like his dad lost his license due to a drunk, drunk driving, driving incident. But for his job, he needed to be able to drive. So he just like pretended that he could still drive. But then there was an accident and he was fired from his company for like faking credentials and... Somebody died. Yeah, I think like a kid probably died. Probably. Was my 
the implication. I don't know if they ever actually said. <laughs> and they keep getting like harassed, and he gets harassed in school, and his parents get harassed, and they have to keep moving. They have to keep moving because people keep figuring out and like spray painting on his door that he's a murderer, and mm-hmm. um, because of this, he can't really find stable income, which is why you know the wife and the son work, and it just sort of degrades until we. You know, he started out as not that bad of a person, mm-hmm. but made a bunch of mistakes, and now he is the jaded person that we saw, you know, when we were looking at the the, the copies there. Yes. Um, you know, we learned that this building was open to the public, and it was basically, Araya was just like, yeah, I mean, it's designed to drive people insane and slowly, like, kill their loved ones and themselves. Um, which is what happened. Like, all the residents died, and that's why, you know, the building keeps reacting there. Um, and he's like, all right, you're right. I don't want to die anymore, um, but I still want to go save Shiki, I guess for my sake and not for her sake at this point. Yeah, you're in the power of self-respect. Yeah. Um, they decide, hey, no matter what happens, don't go looking for each other after the fact in case we don't, in case one of us gets killed, we don't want to feel guilty about you know, that other person's death. I'm like, okay. Um, before this happens, we go to Toko, who just, like, shows up at the building. Mm-hmm. Cornel- Cornelius Alba is there. Um, and I think he shortly gets taken care of. Um, yeah. By Toko. But then Araya Sorry was just like, yeah, no, that puppet you made can't kill me. <laughs> and, uh, Basically kills Toko at mm-hmm. that point, but leaves her brain still alive in a jar. Um, Cornelius is like, "Can I have that?" And he's like, "Sure, whatever. I don't. I literally give zero well, shits Cornelius about is anything." Like, you told you promised I could kill her, and he's like, "Well, you suck. You fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to go in. Here's the here's here's the brain that I kept for a specific reason." <laughs> You can have it. But I literally no do not needed. care. Yeah. <laughs> I do not care what happens. At any, he's like, if my plan fails, great. If my plan succeeds, great. I yeah. don't care. It's the same either way. Um, so he's like, yep, you can have the head. Turns out, Toko, such a master puppet maker, that she has made a puppet that is exactly like her and grows at like the same rate as her. Mm-hmm. You know, would make the same choices so that it's always exactly like her. And when uh, Cornelius, Mikia shows up and Cornelius has got the head and then like, he's like showing off or getting a little carried away, mm-hmm. it, you know, squashes the head, actually kills Toko. And at that point, Puppet Body wakes up and it's like, I don't know if I'm the original Toko, if, which one was the puppet. Doesn't matter. But I'm the one with the soul now. <laughs> In this briefcase. And, and, and this other creature which i read was some sort of demon that she has in a box interesting um that could have eaten the whole building if she wanted it to but then that would have drawn attention to her from the majors association which she doesn't want (laughs) so so it just eats alba instead after alba i guess was taking out his uh vengeance on toko through mikia by slamming his head into a wall Knocks uh, him out. He's fine. He'll be fine. That blunt force trauma to his temple. He's not dead. He's fine. He'll make a recovery. Yeah. I mean, he's she in the bandaged next... him up with some cloth. He's in the next one. <laughs> yeah. And we've already learned we're in chronological order now. Yeah. There's no flashback shenanigans here. Um. Then, yeah. So Toko shows back up at this point. And defeats Cornelius with the demon in the box. Um, That's my demon in the box. Meanwhile, this whole time, Tomo Tomo. was going through the underground garage. Garage. He he goes into like a manhole, which has an entrance to this underground garage, which was sealed off. Which Mm -hmm. is actually where a bunch of the brains of all the residents are being stored. So that they can like supply the clone body with memories of that last day. And he finds his own brain. And he's like, yep, fuck. And then part of his arm, which was injured off. in the first fight, falls off. And there's gears and shit inside of it. Um, like a shitty made puppet. Yeah. 
he tries to fight. He tries to go back to like his apartment or something. He's got Cheeky's knife, and um, or he's got Cheeky's sword. Yeah, he has the sword. I think he has the knife too. Might have both. Yeah, um, but he like tries to bring the sword to her somehow. Mm. Um, Raya Soryu kills him, mm. races him from existence, and it's like your your origin was worthlessness. <laughs> And it's like, nothing you did mattered. And like his last line, Tomo's last line is, but I was here. Oh. And that's something. Yeah. Um, then the new Tokos in the lobby killed Alba. Soryu shows up. Um, and she's like, he's like, are you going to try to fight me again? He's like, she's like, no. I lost the first time you killed me. I'm not going to fight you again. <laughs> and it's like, uh, you know, is this your plan? Blah, 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 blah what are you seeking yes wisdom um you know this this is and then he's like wait so what did you do to shiki it's like i put her in a boundary beyond space and time he's like oh, oh well, that was a mistake you up. should have encased her in concrete if you wanted to stop her <laughs> fucking magic boundary she's gonna cut that shit in no time sure enough oh okay it kind of reminded me of like the end of Helsing, or like he goes into the Schrodinger's cat thing. And he has to like, yeah, kill all everybody, but then he shows up at the end. It's kind of I got that vibe from this. It's kind of like, yeah, she's like she'll find it. She's got Mystic Eyes of Death perception. Yeah, she'll be able to kill this. He barrier. put like fifty thousand boundaries in front of her, and she wakes up. She's just like, yeah, I can get through this. <laughs> this is easy. Yeah. It's it might take me a little bit. This is a Tuesday. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, I guess everything that's happened up to now doesn't matter because she would have shown up around right now anyway. <laughs> is what is what Toko says, and it's like, all right, <laughs> but the sword's here now. So yep. She can use the sword, and she can uh, kill uh, Soryu in his plans. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I don't really remember what happens after that. They fall off the building. Soryu yeah. dies, or like his whatever dies. Yeah, um, his puppet. Yeah, no, he he dies, dies, and Toko's like, "Oh, are you gonna, you know, come back?" And he's like, "I didn't prepare an extra body like you did. Okay. <laughs> this is my only one. I didn't feel like it was necessary." He explains his actions. But then who do we see at the end? Um, six, or is that like a flashback? That was a flashback. That was a flashback. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's at the end of six. That's not at the end of five. Okay. Mm. I thought that scene was at the end of five for some reason. But no, it makes sense. It's at the end of six because it's setting up for okay. seven. But that was a flashback. Yes, that was a flashback. Okay. That was when we had the flashbacks at the end of four, or not necessarily flashbacks, but we had those scenes at the end of four. The scene with that one guy. Okay. It's the same scene. Gotcha, we just see the guy now. We, we see an extended version of it. Gotcha. Okay. Um, we get a little bit of, you know, the... Yeah, so we learn he wanted to end the world because he wanted the records of the deaths of all humans. He also, like, hates humans. <laughs> yeah. Um, Toko gives him, like, a lecture about the collective unconscious and how it's like you're basically trying... To reach the thing that you hate, because that's sort of what the root is, is this collective unconscious that connects us all. Um, so, you know, there's there's a little bit of irony there. Um, then we get a weird, you will. we get a weird sequence where we see like Shiki and Tomo like sit down at a restaurant. It's like a weird like mirror image mm -hmm. thing that they do. Um, Wiki Wikipedia says that this is to represent the mirror slash oppositeness of the the taiji the yin yang symbol okay um after the credits we get a scene where mikia shows up at shiki's apartment and you know the door is locked he rings the doorbell she's like what are you gonna do now i'm not getting out of bed and then he uses the key that tomo gave him before oh, they okay. split up to go into the apartment and then she's like i don't think it's fair uh, I should have a key to your apartment, too. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, like, the second indication that they're a thing. 
The first indication is in the first movie when she asks him to stay over. <laughs> so it's like, all right, just subtly sort of a thing here. Uh, but that's that's the that's the fifth movie. Yeah, I think we understood what happened in it. It's just confusing. Yeah, <laughs> intentionally. We got the gist of it. It's like you think you think Christopher Nolan's got some weird timeline cuts to deal with. <laughs> yeah, the paradox spiral has got all over the place. Cutting in the middle of a dialogue scene. I was also that one person who watched Inception, and I'm just like, I, I basically get this. I don't oh, know yeah, Inception's not that hard. This is like, why is people like not understanding this? Yeah, the the one that, and even this one wasn't so hard, but like, um, what, what's his first Memento? Memento See, was I haven't like seen Memento. Memento, I'm like, I think I pretty much got the gist of it. Okay. Uh, but like it would have warranted another watch. I have not tried Tenet yet. Uh, oh, yeah, I feel like that one might be a little bit more confusing. But mm -hmm. I don't know. I can follow these different times. Like Oppenheimer wasn't that hard to follow, but it's very clear. You know, at least he uses like visual gimmicks sometimes. It's like, mm -hmm. well, this one's in black and white, and this one's in color, and it's like uh, they don't do that in this movie. No, they don't. <laughs> You're very much wondering when is when what is these scenes are not in the proper order, and it sort of makes sense at the end here. Okay, uh, so as long as that discussion was, um, Oblivion recording shouldn't be too hard. Though there was a confusing thing I found in Oblivion. Sorry, recording. can I ask some notes? Sure. So what is it? Oh, uh, I can't pronounce the evil guy. Araya Soryu. Yeah, Araya. He says his origin is stillness. Does it, do they bring up exactly what that means? Um. So I think it means that because he's, he's there's a thing where he implies that he's lived for hundreds of years. Yes, he's stayed still. Yes. So he okay. So origins are weird, okay. and they don't necessarily. Um. Uh, they don't. They don't okay. always follow like conventional like rules of like. What does this mean? So, for instance, um, going back to Fate, Shiro's origin is blades, which is why he's so good at projection magic for swords. Okay. Um, you know, that's just part of his origin. So does, I guess my question is, does everyone have an origin? Yes, everyone should have an origin. Not just mages or mages or whatever. Correct. Yes, okay. everyone has an origin. Now, whether or not you that origin means anything to you, like if you, but it's basically like you can live up to your true potential if you can discover your origin and act upon it. Okay. You know, but like it doesn't necessarily mean like okay, Shiro could have lived a life without knowing his origin with swords and without ever doing anything with swords, mm -hmm. but he's able to. He's more attuned to swords than he is anything else. Gotcha. So like the fact that he discovered that means that he can wield greater power than he normally would. Gotcha. Um, so, Araya's origin being stillness just means he's very, he doesn't make sudden actions. Like, he, I think he comments where it's just like, yeah, I'm, like, it's a fight with Shiki. He's, like, bleeding a lot. He's like, I kind of have to just sort of stay still and recover. I can't, like, quickly go out and grab the other guy here and do something. I can't chase after yeah, it's him. It's kind of shown in that little flashback where he's in that battlefield, or it feels like... Mm -hmm. He couldn't really do anything because of his origin. Yeah. That's yeah, not so his... His nature isn't to, like, fight. To rush into things. Yeah. His, his nature is to, to slowly observe move and things stuff, yeah. and, and be very still. The stiller he is, the more power he has. Gotcha. Which is sort of a contradiction, mm -hmm. again, because to use that power, you have to act. And to act, you have to not be still, which is why, you know, like, okay, my power is... I, I've tied myself to this building, which is still it yeah. stays in place like there's not much going on here um seems so, like his main power is some sort of like field he makes that like goes outward to where he's not physically like really moving his yeah yeah he he out. creates boundaries yeah. he's very good at those um but like she, again she can just kill them yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. get through them um mm. so let, let's 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 move on to oblivion recording okay. so oblivion recording basically starts with Azuka being like, I'm a troubled teen. 
Also, I, I love, love my brother. I love, I'm in love with my brother, but that's not why I'm troubled. I'm troubled because my brother likes this bitch. <laughs> Um, but she can basically part a recurring thing in there and it's sort of brought up at the beginning is that she doesn't remember an exact moment that she fell in love with her brother Mm -hmm. Um, and she's sort of trying to remember like she has a dream that she thinks is tied to it but she can't remember the dream Um, but Shiki is or Asuka I should say has been tasked with finding out who the magus is that's controlling fairies that are causing stress to people in the academy that she goes to yes um and to help with that they send shiki over there and she's like why did you send shiki it's like well you can't see fairies shiki can't because of her mystic eyes so you're just gonna have to work together um they are like questioning one of the professors Mm -hmm. and at one point the um at one point, Azuka is like, yeah, I know he looks like my brother. Don't worry about it. Um, but uh, what is it? Shiki was like, I don't think you look like your brother. <laughs> uh, which is because that guy is a magus with the power of suggestion. He was um, using suggestion to make her think that, you know, to think favorably of her to see him oh, okay. like she sees her brother. Is I believe what was going on there. Gross. Gross. Um then there's there's this sketchy student council president that after Azuka talks to her, she wakes Ouija. her up. <laughs> I don't think they pronounce it Ouija, but that's what it looks like. I thought it was uh, o- Oja. Yeah. Um, it's O-U-G-I. Okay. Um, Ogi, maybe? Ogi. Anyway, they um, a- after, after talking to her, they uh, wake up. Or she wakes up like three hours later and says, yeah. yeah, it's like three o'clock. And it's like, nope, nope you lost your memory. <laughs> uh, bitch. Then they're try- they go and investigate. Um, you know, trying we to learn find- that we, we get the like gist of the, uh, why they're investigating because of this, they think suicide of a student. Yeah, so there was an attempted suicide. That See, rumors I thought this are... whole time that she actually committed suicide. Yes, that was the confusing thing. She did not actually commit suicide. Because at the end, she was like, like, yeah, she recovered. It's like, yeah. what? Yeah. She no, was I... dead. Yeah, I thought she was dead too. Okay. But um, there was an attempted suicide. She said something about the fairies. It's too much. Mm-hmm. Um, she had been looking really like pale recently. And there was rumors around that she was in a relationship with the one teacher. of the teachers. Yes. Who was a bad... Also rumors around that he was a bad egg. You know, involved ties in, with the yakuza or whatever bad um, people, and that he's probably on the bottom of a river somewhere. Yes. Um, they. I'm I'm trying to think. Um, oh, so she is trying to use the fairies to erase everybody's memories of the suicide attempt because that was like her best friend, mm-hmm. and she doesn't want the disgrace or the shame to come to her friend's name. Um, she also wants revenge on the class that she was in of all those people that spread those rumors and thought those things about her. Um, so using that that power of suggestion teacher friend of theirs, they kind of put all those students in a trance and hide them in a classroom with a bunch of uh, lighters and open fuel containers, like trying to get them to... Because the suicide attempt was through arson. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, trying to get the, the class to die in the same way as some sort of justice, some sort of warped, twisted sense of justice. Um, it's revealed that um, OG killed that one teacher, or she thinks she killed that mm-hmm. one teacher when she was, like, arguing with him about it. And she used his body to make her familiars, which are the fairies. Yes. Um because you need a corpse to create a familiar. The Azuka gets knocked unconscious at that point when they try to erase her memory, but it doesn't work. Um, the The teacher wakes her up. She's like, I'm going to go look at the suicide site and see if there's anything there. There's the nothing te- over there. The teacher says, you won't find anything over there. She runs over there, and all of a sudden, where there was building, there's no longer building. 
And she's like, what the fuck? Um, oh, we get that now. Yeah. <laughs> like, why is that building gone? Why is this a surprise? It's like, oh, it, it wasn't gone this morning. Yeah. I get um, but they were hiding the students in there, and she couldn't, because of the power of suggestion, she thought. Yep, I got it now. That it, it was there. Um, there is a message from Mikia, who's like, hey, number one, teacher died of a heart attack. It just so happened okay. that it happened when she was arguing with Ouija. Mm-hmm. Um, OG, whatever her name is. Um, the Also, there's a magus known as God's Word. He can control people's recognition using words. Listen to music like so you can't hear yeah. him so that you can move past them there. Countermeasure. Yes. Counterforce. Um, also, you know, the... Does she tell her what happened with the with with the calorie that the student is is that from Mikia? The what? what? The fact that the student wasn't in a relationship with the teacher, but that she was addicted to drugs because of the teacher forcing them on her. We learned that at some point. I don't remember when though. Yeah. Um, but Azuka goes and confronts um, OG about that. It's like that's not what happened. This is what happened. You know, it wasn't. It wasn't like stress or something like that. What causes that was the, the drug addiction. And she com- tried to commit suicide because she was ashamed of being a drug addict. Because mm-hmm. she was forced into yeah. it, basically. Um, you know, so no, nobody killed anyone. Because first of all, Cowrie didn't die. Second of all, the teacher died of a heart attack. So like nobody is guilty of anything here. Um, OG is like, nope, I don't want to believe that. I'm going to choose to believe my own story of the event. Because... You know, otherwise that would be besmirching my friend's memory is, you know, if I think of her as a drug addict or something. Okay. Um, but the fairies, I guess, for whatever reason, aren't fully on OG's side. It says, Wikipedia says that they re- the fairies rebel against her. And then Azuka destroys the source of the magic. Um, which is like some weird, like, looking plant spirit thing. Well, I kind of got that, like, what's... The mages was behind the whole thing. He's the one yeah. who gave her the power. Yes. And at some point, I guess, maybe when he's fighting Shiki, she lost control of the power, maybe, or something. Yes. They were, she was no longer in control of it. Or, like, he wasn't paying. I don't know. Yeah. But somehow she loses control of it. Yep, she loses control of it. Azka destroys the source of the magic. The, the God's Word guy is like, oh, yeah, I was hired by um, Soryu to... Like unlock unlock the oblivion recording, which it's like you can't. He can like erase people's memories or whatnot with the fairies and all that, but you can't. Um, the fairies can't help them remember something that's been lost normally through memory loss, because um, that's been sent to oblivion. It's it's beyond you mm-hmm. know magic's capabilities yeah. of recovering there. Um, but he was sent to go try to help Shiki remember something that happened right before her accident. Um, but then he just, like, fucks off. <laughs> Shiki doesn't kill him, but, you know, he just, like, explains that and then goes away. Um, Azuka finally remembers in a dream the next day that uh, why why she remembers, or she remembers the dream and why she fell in love with her brother. Um... She also forces her brother to go on a date with her as a as recompense for what he did in movie three when he sent Shiki to go um, say mm-hmm. that he couldn't make it. Um, and then in the epilogue, we get the scene where we described before Ar- Araya Soryu shows up to a guy that I, I'm telling you we have, we have seen him and heard his name, but not in the same instance. <laughs> Uh, before he's in an alley he's killed a man unsure of what to do with the body he starts to eat it but then he's like grossed out by it and Araya is like no eat no it. no 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 eat it awaken your origin eat it <laughs> eat it and then go through with it and the guy just eats like it weird out Al, Al Yankovic the guy, eat it he's like you ate that whole man in a little over an hour that then is your limit what <laughs> that's a pretty big limit but all right I mean, some people could need a horse, but a human, wow. (laughs) 
So that's that's Oblivion recording. That's that's ep- that's Epa movies five and six. Mm-hmm. We have got seven left. So next episode is going to be seven and, and epilogue. epilogue, and maybe eight. Maybe I don't know. Or maybe eight will be its own thing. Or maybe we'll just watch eight and we won't talk about it. Depends on how long it takes for me to finish Dragon Ball, I suppose. <laughs> Because I guess we'll just say that we're gonna have a I watched I rewatched all of Dragon Ball and some of uh, uh, I was gonna bring this up later but I thought it was gonna be a shown and tell a shown and tell yeah <laughs> okay um, as opposed to shoujo and tell yeah okay uh, yeah we're we'll be doing that eventually maybe have Brock on he's got a we both have a big history with DBZ um, we're not necessarily talking about DBZ we're talking about just DBZ. mainly Dragon Ball. Um, but I did force Ben to watch my favorite episodes of Dragon Ball Z. I don't know if my favorite, but my underappreciated episodes of Dragon Ball Z, mm-hmm. uh, which I will not spoil what that is. <clears throat> but you can find us anywhere that you find podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. Um, you can also find us on YouTube. I read an email today that Google Podcasts is going away. So interesting. It's all going to be on YouTube Music, which they keep doing that. They keep taking away apps that I use and replacing them with YouTube Music. <laughs> so I hope that our podcast will show up on YouTube Music. At the very least, it'll show up on YouTube Music because it'll be a video on YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> so I don't know how that's going to work, but that we don't have to worry about that till next year. Cool. Because uh, who knows? But we're anime territory. Look for a picture of a cityscape when you're on YouTube because I think there's another anime territory out there. Um, I don't think I have anything else really to plug at this point. Nope. So we'll be back in a fortnight and uh, you're now leaving the anime territory. Let's go, Dragon Ball! <laughs>